Ladies and gentlemen, let's game to the com video. We're going to be talking about three tech news pieces. The first of which would be Intel's KB Lake shipments. So then we're going to move over to AMD's Zen processors for the server market. And then finally, we're going to talk about the perspective release dates for the RX 460 and the RX 470. Now we're going to stick with Intel first because it's the shorter piece of news. So that makes sense just to get it out and over and done with. But as Many of you are aware, currently Skylake is the de facto processor for the mainstream uh, user. So for example, the 6600K, the 6700K, and all of the other different derivatives. Now they are, of course, using 14NM, which is also being utilized with Broadwell as well, which was its predecessor. The KB Leg processors have been finalized and now shipping to PC builders for use in complete systems. According to Chipseller's CEO, Brian Krasanke, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, there's a very good chance that I'm not, unfortunately. Now, whether we're going to start seeing that trickle down to you and I, in other words, perhaps the folks who just build their own PCs, I don't know. Now, what's rather interesting about this is that it still is going to maintain the same four core configuration that we've seen for some time now. However, like let's say the 6700K and most of the other i7s, it's going to of course support hyper-threading. We don't know many details regarding the processor unfortunately, but what I can tell you is it will of course <coughs> be not only utilizing 14NM, but it's going to have about a 10% improvement performance compared to Skylake if running at the same clock speed, which isn't a massive upgrade. So let's say, once again, if you've got a 6600K, you may not want to move over to the same equivalent processor of KB Lake, but it is a good upgrade for folks who are stuck with Haswell or something similar. While the socket itself is still going to be LGA 1151, which is of course the same as its predecessor, Skylake utilized, there are a couple of subtle differences with the chipset. For one, it's going to offer native USB 3.1 generation 2 support. While Skylake could do that with its own motherboards, it needed an additional add-on chip to do that. And plus as well, we're going to see a new graphics architecture for the chip itself to improve performance for 3D graphics, 4K support, uh, HDCP 2.2. Honestly, most of that stuff is nice, but obviously if you happen to already own a discrete graphics card let's say a geforce or a radeon card none of that probably means diddly squat to you now ultimately it is probable that intel aren't aiming this to get out at roughly the same time that zen is going to hit the market which i'll get into more in just a second uh, in terms of the zen side of things but in terms of release date Zen, as I tackled yesterday, is going to hit the limited production for desktop at 2016, most likely the latter quarter of 2016, while mass production is going to start, uh, or rather mass volume is going to hit into store shelves in early 2017. No specific release date, so you could take early as January, or you could take that as, let's say, March. It's totally down to your interpretation. Speaking of Zen, so Zen, as you probably know, is the architecture of the processor. Now, for Summit Ridge, that is the desktop variant, which you and I are probably most going to care about, because ultimately we're probably not going server-side. But Zen-based Optron processors are going to appear mid-2017. And some whispers in the wind, which are originating on Fudzilla, indicate that there are going to be three different sockets, which is a bit of a bit of a strange one. Um, and they are going to come in different configurations. So the entry level processors are going to be in four or eight Zen core configurations and are going to utilize the unwieldy name of SP4R2 BGA socket and they're going to be developed under Snowy Owl. Now it's going to go all the way up with different socket types all the way up to 8, 12 and 16 cores but eventually there is going to be the Naples SP P3 processor, which is going to offer 16, 24, or 32 cores. Now, the SP3 socket is exclusive for those, 
and it's going to be an absolute monster because of course that is actually 64 threads we do know some details about the zeppelin zp cluster and that is and this is fairly well established now 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core and there are going to be four zen cores each sharing eight megabytes of level 3 cache so theoretically speaking if you've got a cluster of these zen cores they're going to start of course uh, talking to one another via an interconnect it's pretty damn impressive what amd are doing now wisp is in the wind once again originating from fuzzilla is that the instruction per clock is still very much up in the air AMD, as I've said a dozen times over now, have stated that we're going to be seeing about a 40% improvement over the previous generation. However, some folks are saying that it could be higher and could be competitive with the, Z with the Skylake architecture, which would be rather interesting because previously some rumours had pegged it to be closer to Haswell. The last thing I want to tackle is the RX 460 and the bigger brother, the RX 470. So, while I'm fairly sure most of this is established, the RX 460 is aimed at the eSports division. It's a tiny little uh, GPU. It's roughly the size and the aesthetic of the Nano does not require a PCIe connector and puts out enough performance to run most eSports focused titles at around the 1080p mark, while the RX 470 is looking to be rather tasty indeed. It offers 4 gigabytes of memory and should put out enough performance for most popular 3D games to run at 1080p. Now the reason that I find the 470 really interesting is because of the pricing rumors of the card which is around 150 US dollars. Now while yes the RX 480 is really interesting for the price, one cannot help but argue that the 470 may be for folks on a really limited budget an even better proposition because the price point is really cheap and you get an awful lot of performance for that but there have been some questions regarding the release date and amd have been a bit cagey and believe me i've asked but a leak has appeared from chip hell and they support the or rather tout that the release date for the 470 is going to be the 4th of august um, 2016 obviously while the RX 460 is going to happen in just around three days from now now there are a couple of other sources which are reporting it's going to be the 4th of August but for the uh, for, for the 470 but the RX, but the uh, 460 has still not been confirmed now honestly speaking I'm actually surprised it's taken so long for the 460 to trickle down to retail i think it's because amd have been so busy promoting the 480 and getting things absolutely right and honestly i'm really happy with the card uh, i have one that i've been reviewing in the background things have just been a little slower because well we got sent the gtx 1070 review and i only had around a week with the card and as regular viewers will know i had a bit of a hard drive slash os failure with one of the testing rigs and it was well let's just say the stuff hit the fan and it wasn't a pleasant experience so things got pushed back quite a bit um but yeah i think the 480 is a really nice card it does beg some questions what the hell they're going to do with the rx 490 if it even exists i mean there have been a lot of rumors to tell me it does but at the moment amd are in a really good position um Contrary to what they were like six months ago, currently their stocks are up, their sales figures are going up, their profits are going up, and they're looking to be able to compete in the server market, which they've been rather not competitive in, and that's to say the least. They've been pretty much a dead duck until I've swallowed up most of the server market if folks are looking for an x86-based processor. And, of course, NVIDIA swallowed up a lot of the graphics card market, but now they're starting to make some headway. One could actually make a pretty good argument that the GTX 1060 was priced so cheaply simply because NVIDIA were worried that the mainstream market was going to be so affected, so shaken up with the RX 480. And to be honest with you, that's kind of a good thing. I don't want one company to be out on, on top. If... I had a perfect scenario in my mind, it would be that one company would be ahead in one generation, one company would be ahead in the next generation, 
and sales figures would be fairly even because that way it's like there's innovation moving forward both companies are going to want their best drivers they don't want to be super um how can i put this in a very in a very nice way they won't uh they won't go closed source let's just put it that way and ultimately it will move towards innovation in the industry and if you're a pc gamer that's great or if you're a console gamer that's also great because obviously that innovation trickles down and what happens in one market one segment ultimately does affect all segments with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video it's been a bit of a short one today uh i'm currently for those of you who remember i did get the interview questions back from the guys over at Kronos. I need to go over them. There are a lot of questions. And I had two chaps answering them. One from NVIDIA, one from ARM. So I need to amalgamate those questions and double check that everything's okay. And I'm also editing the photos and the video from the GTX 1070 review. Plus doing a few other bits and pieces on the side. So today's been like my half day of work for the channel specifically. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, normal stuff, if you like the video, subscribe, like, share, you know, give me cookies, that type of thing. But for now, I'm going to let you all go. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.